and this is what we're making today. These are White Castle sliders, and nowadays you can find it in any supermarket on your frozen section. But if you are one of the lucky ones, you can go to the fast food restaurant and get them fresh. Unfortunately, they don't have it available in Florida, but as you can see, they have two versions, the hamburger one and the cheeseburger. Let me open it up and show you what they look like. Yes, these are 100% frozen, but if you take a look at inside, this is what it looks like. They have a thin patty of beef, which comes with their trademark of five holes. And obviously, you can see there's a bunch of onions on top. And the instructions tell you to put them in the microwave for 60 seconds. Once I've done that, here are the White Castle sliders. It is incredible how a little thing like this is so popular. I guess if you grow up eating one of these, you totally understand why. But this is one of those things that if you see it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But hey, they are extremely popular. And as I take a bite oh it brings back so many memories but here's the deal this one is the plain version let's not forget about the cheese version and as i open the box this is what it looks like exactly what you expected the same exact thing without any difference but with an extremely small piece of cheese on it man it is absolutely ridiculous the size of this cheese i will say the cheese is a huge upgrade nice soft bun and i'm gonna show you my take on it so let's do it and the first thing we're going to work on is the beef. And as you can see, it is quite interesting. And if you want to have the same experience, you cannot skip this step. To make these patties, we need ground beef. And here's a quick tip. Whenever you're freezing it, try to freeze it just like this. There are a few benefits. It takes less space on your freezer. It is easy to thaw. And most importantly, you will not have any freezer burn. And to make White Castle burgers, this is a big help. And here's why. I started by laying some parchment paper on the bottom. By the way, I am using 80-20. For me, that's a perfect ratio of beef and fat. The next thing you want to do is lay another parchment paper right on top. Using a roller, spread them out as much as possible. Because as you remember and I just showed it to you, the patty is extremely thin. Once I was done, this is what they look like. I was aiming for a quarter of an inch thick. Because as you know, as meat cook, it will still shrink. Now the next step might seem ridiculous, but it's actually quite important. You must make them the same size as your bun. But keeping in mind that they will shrink in the cooking process. So it is important to make them half an inch larger so that they will fit your buns. To cut them square, I'm going to be using my pizza cutter. But in case you don't have one, a cleaver will work just fine or a large knife or anything that you have. Because we already measured everything, all we have to do is follow the guides. Try to be as precise as you can. But if you make a mistake, it is not a big deal. We're not building a rocket here, we're building sliders. The next part might seem absolutely ridiculous, but it is crucial to make this work. And it's those holes that I showed you in the beginning. And the whole idea is that the steam will come up through those holes and steam your bun. And at the same time, cooking your burger and caramelizing the onions. And for these sliders, they work perfectly. And to make them, I'm just using a chopstick. The only thing that you need is to have a lot of patience. As you can see, by the time I was done, this is what they look like. Now you want to put them on the tray because you have to freeze them. If you don't freeze them, this will not work. And make sure you put another parchment paper right on top. After 24 hours, I took them out and this is what they look like. As you can see, 100% frozen. Now all there's left to do is to break them apart. And the awesome thing about making them this way is that you can make a huge batch and have them whenever you're ready. Because you must cook them from frozen. And I'll tell you one thing, they are extremely convenient. Now let's talk about buns. If you don't want to go the extra mile in making your own buns, this is a good option. It is the King's Hawaiian Original Buns. And let me tell you, they are awesome. But I know a lot of you don't have access to these. But if you want to make them nice and easy and quick, this is your best option. But to be honest with you, making them at home is even better. And I'm going to show you my take on it. And these are all the ingredients I'm going to be using. Remember, exact amount, always in the description down below for you. We got all-purpose flour, butter, pineapple juice, sugar, milk, eggs, salt, and yeast. Now let's get this out of the way. I know you're going to ask me, why are my eggs so small? And that's because I'm using quail eggs. And the only reason is because of quarantine. So the first thing to do is to mix all your dry ingredients. With your flour, throw in some sugar and the yeast. Mix it well and make sure everything is nicely combined. Then you want to combine all of the wet ingredients, starting with the milk and pineapple juice, followed by all of the eggs. Now, if you have a mixer, this will make your job a lot easier. But I'll tell you right now, this recipe is a big one because it's not worth making just two or three. I like to make a big batch. And you're going to see what happened to my mixer here. Yep, my mixer broke this day. And the worst part is that it's not even mine, it's my wife's. So yes, if you think I got in trouble, I did. So since the mixer was broken, I had to do it the old-fashioned way. You just gotta put in the work. The next step is to oil up the bowl so you can throw in your dough as it needs to rise for two hours. And as you can see, after two hours, it is huge. That's a sign that you did everything perfect. 
Now you want to punch it down and make sure you take it out of the bowl so that you can start making your rolls. Make sure to oil the pan that you're going to be baking with. If not, everything is going to get stuck. Now all there's left to do is to start making the balls. If you want them to be the same exact size, I definitely recommend a scale. And you're shooting for a weight of 60 grams each. Once I was done, this is what they look like. The next step is extremely crucial. You can either leave them at room temperature to rise for two hours or let them rise overnight on your refrigerator. And the very next day, I took them out, removed the plastic, and this is what they look like. As you can see, they are ready to become White Castle sliders. To make sure they have a nice golden brown color, you want to do an egg wash. And this is pretty straightforward, a little bit of milk, egg, and honey. Make sure you brush them good and get every single edge. And the next step is where I made a huge mistake. I usually make these in my Dutch oven, but unfortunately, my sister-in-law had it. So I had to MacGyver this thing. And here's where I made a huge mistake. I threw in some aluminum foil right on top because you don't want to bake them uncovered because they will burn. So after throwing them in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes, I took them out and this is what happened. Yes, they rose too high and got completely stuck on an aluminum foil. At this point, I was like, man, I should just make another batch. But I said, you know what? I must show you guys that everybody makes mistake. No one is perfect all the time. But however, if you think I'm going to throw these away, you're absolutely out of your mind. But man, did it hurt my feelings? Yes, it did. So to finish them up, I threw in a little bit of extra egg wash and threw them back in for an additional 10 minutes. That will give me a nice golden brown on top because they are already fully cooked. Now the last thing to do is to melt the good old butter right on top. Because even though they are not the best looking buns I've ever made, I'll tell you one thing, they are the best tasting ones. Because if there's one thing that I would love for you guys to try from this video are these buns. They are just phenomenal. Now let's talk about onions. If you think White Castle use fresh onions, no, 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 they don't. Believe it or not, this is what they use. Dehydrated onions. And here's the reason they use this one. It packs a lot of flavor, but most importantly, it has a very long shelf life. This allows the restaurants to have a bunch of them in stock. But the first thing that they need to do is to rehydrate them. And for that, it's pretty straightforward. Just throw them in the bowl with a little bit of water. Mix them well because they're going to soak it all up. And of course, the last ingredient we're going to be using is cheese. And you know the good old American cheese is the one to be used. But now that we have everything ready, all there's left to do is to cook them. And for that, White Castle uses a very unique technique, which I am going to show to you how right now. So I say enough talking and let's make some White Castle sliders. So let's do it. All right, everybody, here we have our sliders. What do you think, Angel? Huh? They tiny. They tiny, bro. <laughs> they tiny. I know we're used to smash burgers, but I'll tell you one thing. I mean, everybody in the world probably had a little White Castle, right? This is like White Castle, Angel. Yeah, you put this in the microwave for one minute and that's it, you're good, right? <laughs> that's it, you're good to go. It's as easy as it gets. But I'll tell you one thing, making the buns at home is different because as soon as I made it, this guy attacked half of them. <laughs> He's like, oh, I want some of that. They are so wonderful, everybody. If you never made it in my home, do it. Just the smell, smell it. Like the bread smell is, okay. is so wonderful. You know what I mean? Okay. It comes through. I wonder what it tastes like. <laughs> you ready? Let's go. <laughs> mm. Come on. Pretty damn good. I, White tasso is good. This but, is what it tastes like, yeah. But homemade is so much better though. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. It's the bread. The bread is everything. I'm telling you guys. It's so easy to make though. But it's like steamed, I guess, right? Yeah, there's no brownish, you so, know what I mean? No caramelization whatsoever. That, I would like some caramelization. I know, you know, I think it would be better if you like smash it like you know, like a smash burger, and you get that brownness on, on the, that we really enjoy. This bun right here, everybody, with a smash burger. Oof, I'm telling you, 
that will be 10 times better. However, I guess we got to make that happen. Exactly. The secret of this White Castle is the buns, the onions, and the juices leak out from the bottom one. You see the bottom one is kind of yeah, wet. Yeah, the bottom one is all like... Like wet up? Yeah. White Castle got some competition. <laughs> How about that? Anyway, guys, these are the White Castle sliders. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in any of the equipment I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.